Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Matt. And we blog over at ownyourfuture.com. Today we're going to talk about college and student debt specifically. Ready to dive in? I'm ready. So, in America, I think student debt just surpassed home mortgages for the most amount of debt in the United States. So, there's because all of us are in debt. Right. So, there's more held in student loans than there are in home equity loans or in, uh, in people's houses, which is a pretty staggering statistic. Is it worth it? That's what we wanted to ask. So, full disclosure, both me and Allison both have professional degrees. I got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And I have a bachelor's in math and a master's in petroleum engineering. So, I would say that the decision for us to go to college, while at the time I felt I kind of just fell into it, I did it because it was what I was supposed to do, it's what everyone else was doing. Um, it has ended up serving me well, but I know there are many that that's not the case. We also had very specific degrees that translated in directly into high salaries immediately after college. Mm -hmm. So I think we're kind of a an outsider of the statistics in terms of students who graduate with tons of debt and then earn 30000 a year, you know, and their debt is twice or three times the amount of their yearly income. Definitely. When I was doing some additional research for this video and the blog post, well, that's kind of accompanying this, I found that only 67% of college graduates were doing a job that required a college education. So that so, means like 40% of people were doing a job that did not even require a college degree. Right. So about a third of the people that went to college ended up getting a job that did not require them to go to college. So they went through, you know, all four, the, years. four years of kind of opportunity cost and also spent all that money, accrued some debt uh, to end up doing a job they could have gone to right out of high school. And of those 67%, only 25%, I think, or 27% of those, 27%, somewhere right in there, yeah. um, are doing a job that's um, directly related to what they studied. So like in our case, where we're both working in the professions that we studied for, um, we would be part of that 27%. The 27% of the 65%. I think it's total. Oh, yeah. total. Yeah. Okay. 27% of college graduates. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's pretty low. Um, so that really raises the the question of your college return on investment and trying yeah. to calculate that ahead of time. And that's something I'll talk about more in the blog post and hopefully come out with a, a little calculator to help those uh, those of you that are parents or have kids that are going into, into college or anybody watching this is high school aged, good for you. Um, yeah. Because I know I wasn't nearly as financially focused. Um, like I said, I kind of fell into college because it was what I was supposed to do. Luckily, I was good at math. Uh, I thought I wanted to build race cars. So in that regard, I'm not doing what <laughs> it's cool to do, but I am using mechanical engineering. Um, so yeah. So is it actually worth it to go to college or is it better just to find a job? Hmm. So I think it really depends. And I think the, what I'm an advocate of is if you know exactly what you want to do when you're coming out of high school, um, then I would encourage you to, you know, consider like further education. Yeah. Um, but if you're like me, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure where I would end up after college. And I know a lot of people get into college and change their major several times, yeah. end up spending additional time in college. Um, if you're kind of unsure, I think it's better to almost go get a job, um, and get some real world experience. Uh, you get a lot of the same experiences you would get in college, I think, it's just living in the real world, um, kind of being self-sufficient and freedom, and yeah. I know a lot of people um, consider college an avenue for that, where you kind of get a lot of personal growth that occurs, and I think you do the same thing yeah. um, without, you know, paying $20,000 a semester for a tuition or whatever that works out to be in, in some people's cases. So I think it's good to get some experience and then maybe go back to school once you know this is what I like to do or this is what I want to do. Um, that way you can be more effective in landing in a job 
that you you require the higher education for, so you know it's kind of going to pan out. And also doing the calculations, like using math calculator to determine, okay, if I go to school to be X, I'm just some major, and I can Google, you know, how much does X make starting out? And I see that they make $40,000 a year. Okay, well, am I going to go to a private school that costs forty grand a year and get into debt for four years? up to my eyeballs so that I can come out and make 40 grand? Or am I going to go to community college for two years and then transfer to a state school and only come out of school with a very small amount of debt so that I can do X job that I have set out to do? So that's something I didn't realize and my dad tried to show me and tried to teach me and he encouraged me to go to a state school because he knew how overpriced private education is and how oftentimes you don't come out of school making what you expect or making enough to even pay your loans off. So you come out of school with a neg way negative net worth and not any skills or like not even not the skills but just like the degrees to cre create the funds to, to pay that off. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I think that was really a point about, you know, community college, state schools versus private schools. Mm -hmm. um, and that's definitely something that needs to be factored in. Um, luckily, I went to a state school just because it was one of the schools um, that I got into. But I also applied to a private school that would have been, you know, six times as much for the same degree. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably be earning about the same income when I came out. Yeah. So, something to definitely consider. Um, and she brought up something really good about skills, right? And I think the way the world is going is that more formal education is kind of going to become less and less important um, mm -hmm. just because there's so much access to um, information and knowledge. Like you're watching us right now and learning online on your own. So I think people are gonna be really capable of learning skills that they want to learn mm -hmm. that are applicable to them and what they wanna do um, without necessarily going to uh, an institutional education. Um, especially things like sales, business, programming, um, and there's a bunch of websites like Skillshare and Great Courses Plus and a mm -hmm. bunch of places that are kind of springing up as online um, educational platforms that I think as those develop more and more that employers who are looking for someone who's very specific specific and narrow focused on something mm -hmm. are going to appreciate someone's work experience and some of these like certification type things almost more than someone who went to get a bachelor's degree because yeah. I know in my job I use probably you know four to five classes that I took in my actual day-to-day -day work out of you know how many did I take 20 but you wouldn't have been able to get your job if you didn't have the degree it's true which is true, I wouldn't have. But, so. um, but yeah, I can imagine in other professions, it's similar. You know, you use a very small subset of what you learned. I learned a lot of very, uh, you know, the general core classes um, that, you know, I, I won't use to perform my, my job. I think that there is also, to kind of throw a wrench into this whole thing, mm -hmm. is there's also a value in learning things that you're not necessarily gonna practically use. Like, in college, I took a theater history class. I'm a petroleum engineer, and I will never use my theater history class. But I loved learning about that subset and expanding my mind in that way. And I, I know I'm a lifelong learner. It's something I'm creatively passionate about many things. And I think school is a awesome playground to try on a bunch of different hats. And expand in different ways so even though i understand the financial burden of education i think it is super important and i think it should be more reasonably priced in every setting uh, i'm really glad i went to a public school and my parents helped me out so i didn't graduate with any student debt but my peers who went to University of Texas with me and graduated with student debt. I know they are off. They are better off than people who went to private schools and graduated with heaps of student debt and and 
my the skills I learned at UT were so much more than what I learned in the classroom, and it was just like expanding my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would agree or not. And it's it's difficult to say because obviously I took one path, mm -hmm. and I think that path is suitable for a lot of people. I mean, obviously in this video I've kind of advocated for people to take a different route too that I don't personally have experience with, but. That's kind of going back to what I mentioned before about people wanting to get out of the house, be self-reliant, have a lot of freedom. Um, that's one of those things I kind of pile in there with the experience of college, um, which is a great experience. Um, you learn a lot about yourself, and I do think it's good to you know broaden your horizons and learn about a lot of different things. But I think you can do that if you're a naturally curious person. Yeah. I think you would have done that anyway. And I don't know if it would have been theater history because you may have never crossed paths with that uh, specific topic. Yeah. But I think you would have stayed curious. And like I said, with the you know state that all of these educational platforms are coming to and YouTube and everything, if you wanted to learn about something, you can do that completely self-directed or pay for $200 class on Skillshare or yeah. something like that and, and and get a lot of the same benefit without you know the thousand dollars a credit hour or yeah. two hundred dollars a credit hour that you're gonna pay uh, going to college let alone room and, and board and food plus you know you're giving up the opportunity cost of working during those years which I think is important to note um, while we're not typically really high earners when we're young um, with the compound interest that you could earn on all of those investments that you make early, it's really advantageous to start putting away money as early as possible. So yeah. you give some of that up by, by going to college, hoping to make up for it with you know, increased earning power on the back end, but it's something that should be thought about. True. Yeah, I would, I would agree that you can learn and fulfill those creative needs through other methods besides college. I think that the college atmosphere for me, it was also communal too, and then mm -hmm. you got to meet with people in person and bounce ideas off of each other and learn from your your fellow your friends, your fellow classmates, which is also something. I mean, that's why I don't think it's only restricted to college where you can have that experience. Because when I backpacked Southeast Asia by myself and stayed at all these hostels and met other travelers from all over the world, I learned so much from conversations with them. And that was super eye-opening and a super great learning experience for me. One that I treasure as highly as my college experience of community and friendship and growing together and talking about hard topics. And, mm. and so I think you can replicate it in other ways, whatever is suited to your passion. And so I think the message really of this video is choose yourself like choose what is good for you and it might not be college and that's okay it might be traveling or you know you might need to go out and travel to figure out what your passion is in the world um i mean the founder of charity water who we just listened to a podcast the other day yeah. he went to liberia mm -hmm. on a mercy trips on a mercy ships trip and ended up discovering his passion there was to bring clean water to these people and founded a whole nonprofit organization and now his life is dedicated to that. And from traveling, that's how he found that. He didn't yeah. find it in school, he didn't find it in anything else. I think the founder of Tom's Shoes, Blake Markowski, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he has a similar experience traveling South America mm -hmm. and finding these kids without shoes. And so I think your impact on the world has nothing to do with your education or your experience even i think it has to do with you following your passions definitely and being okay with not doing what everyone else is doing just because everyone else is doing it definitely that's the point that i want you to take out of this video is that don't do what i did i mean it worked out okay for me but a lot of people it doesn't that just you're supposed to go to college because that's what you have to do to be mm -hmm. able to get employed and get a good job and work there till you can retire um, i think there's so much more that the world can offer and we're in a really exciting time when things are changing really fast there's a lot of opportunity for um, entrepreneurship and really just a lot of freedom to design your life in a way that that suits you well so mm -hmm. just making sure we take the time to really think and analyze about those decisions particularly college um, and I think it's important that 
you know, we impress that on our kids because I know when I think back to myself at age 17, 18, I wasn't necessarily um, as financially minded. Or yeah, financially minded. Or just, you know, I didn't have the, the wherewithal to really foresight. consider all of my options. I just said, oh, this is like what people have been saying since, you know, I was young. This is what I have to go do. So. This is what a successful person does is they go right. to college. And we're saying, no, a successful person does what they're passionate about and follows themselves and their heart and not just what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So. Cheers. Bye.